Our next presenter, ladies and gentlemen, is known not only for his nightly satirical take on the news, but also his deep commitment to press freedom. Please welcome the host of The Daily Show, John Stewart. Thank you very much. Thank you so much to be here. Uh, I, I'm, I'm so excited. They've written something very lovely for me, but I... I this, um, this is actually, they're filming a, a profile piece on our honoree about some music for uh, 60 minutes. And I just want to assure them that I am who I say I am. And uh, <laughs> and, uh, and you don't have to check. Is there a committee to protect comedians? <laughs> or it doesn't work that way? It's all right. I felt Scott's bicep on my way up. I think he can handle it. Uh, for those of you who do not know who I am, I am the uh, Bassam Yusuf of America. Thank you. I appreciate that. I host a, a show that is very similar to the show that Bassam Yusuf hosts in Egypt with two small differences. Uh, one, uh, his show is watched by millions. <laughs> he gets Uncle Milty numbers. And two, he hosts his show in a country where freedom of expression is not settled law. He helps carve out the space through his show to help that country understand the importance of dissent and satire's role within that. Now, Bassam did his show, it took off on YouTube and it became a sensation and he got uh, a show on a proper channel and on the Friday nights when it airs, the entire country comes to a halt and they all come out and they all watch it. And he was phenomenal. I mean, it's, it's funny, it's sharp. If, if President Mohamed Morsi wore a funny hat, that Friday, Bassam would wear a funnier hat and he would crush it. And he would talk about the Muslim Brotherhood and he would show clips and it was a sensation. And then the people took to the streets at the end of June and they drove Morsi from power and the army took over. And Bassam had a choice. Bassam could stop doing his show at that moment and leave a hero. He was beloved. He was had his name chanted at him in the streets by all the people that took to the streets and called for Morsi's ouster. Or he could stand for a higher principle, which is not that his satire was purposeful for regime change, but that his satire was purposeful for expression. And so, Bassem Yusuf stood up and did his show and made fun of the new regime and their funny hats. And that lasted a day. So it turns out that the new regime in Egypt has less of a sense of humor than the Muslim Brotherhood. The nice part about Bassem is I've gotten to know him also as a person. He is a, a wonderful friend. He is a surgeon when it comes to satire and an actual surgeon. He is a, a heart surgeon. That's how you know he's not Jewish, is a Jewish person's parents would never let a heart surgeon quit to become a comedian. He is a... Uh, he is an incredible comedian and satirist and an even better man, uh, and I'm honored uh, to be his friend and, more importantly, to be his colleague. And uh, I couldn't respect him anymore. He's truly an inspiration to me and my entire team, and we marvel at the material they're able to put together and their courage in, in putting it out on the air. So I'm thrilled to be here tonight, and please take a look at this. 
Why do I like sarcasm so much? Because it's a way that you can break so many taboos. It just makes people to look beyond what's the obvious. They need to understand that sarcasm and criticism, it's not a tool to bring things down. It's a tool to build. My name is Basim Youssef. I used to be a, a cardiac surgeon, turned into media, and now I do a political star show called Al Burnamib or The Show in Cairo, uh, Egypt. What inspired me to do the shows were actually the discrepancy between what we saw on TV and what we saw on, like on, on the ground. Because I, I went to Tahrir, I was one of the doctors that helped to uh, care for the wounded, and I would go back home and I see a totally different reality. And instead of just being angry about it, the best way to deal with it is just to make fun of it. When I started on YouTube, it was just me writing. When we went to TV, we had a bigger research team. So when you have more exposure, there, your research has to be much more powerful. We don't have real media covering what's going on in Egypt. Um, that made him famous, made him a hero for a lot of Egyptians who wanted to see change in Egypt. Over the last year, when Mohamed Morsi, a former president, was in power, he was maybe the most critical. And a lot of people think that he single-handedly made sure that Morsi is exposed in front of the people by examining his record, by showing the contradiction between the things he said during the campaign uh, to be president and then later on what he did on the ground. And at a time when Mohamed Morsi, who pressed more charges against journalists than the history of Egypt, <laughs> Basim Yusuf kept going. And every week we would say, that's it, he can't take things any further. But then the following week, he comes back at him again, so much stronger, like, whatever you do, I'm not backing off. Eventually, President Morse and his supporters were fed up with him, and they started a legal action against him. And he got into a six-hour investigation with the public prosecutor. He was actually repeating every joke that I said, and said, what did you mean about with this? What did you mean by telling this joke? And we were actually reading the script and watching the videos, and people were laughing. It, it, it was funny. It was quite funny. What did you mean with this joke? Okay, I meant that you... Did you mean them to insult the president? Not at all, no. I wouldn't dream of it. <laughs> now the people who was uh, against me going to the general prosecutor are very happy to send me again to the general prosecutor because I don't say the things that they like right now. The thing is, I don't have a side. I think I'm an enemy to anybody who's an extreme. Just to be clear, you are applauding his courage and satire, and not that they took his show off the air. <laughs> the timing on that was weird, but I get it. Point taken, point taken. Uh, it, it is my honor and pleasure to present the 2013 International Press Freedom Award to my friend Basim Yusuf. <laughs> Sir. What's up, New York? Um, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it gives me great pleasure to be recognized by the Committee to Protect Journalists. It's really amazing to get this award, considering the fact that I'm not even a journalist. <laughs> so, it seems that you ran out of names. So, last, last chance, guys. Was this award meant for me? Can I take it home? This will look great next to my other two Picassos. Oh, yeah, they're great. So again, I would like to thank the committee for this great honor. And I have to say that I am uh, quite impressed by how the committee chose the date of the ceremony to be held in Thanksgiving week. So if you are a journalist who survived death threats, legal harassments, and imprisonment, Good luck going through the Black Friday stampede. <laughs> and if you survive that, 
You always have a chance to feel horrible about yourself because of a drunken uncle in a traditional Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> well played, CBJ, well played. Um, I'm doing my shopping tomorrow at uh, um, Woodbury Common, so <clears throat> I'm safe, pre-sale. Uh, I'm extremely honored to be even mentioned in the same sentence with those incredible freedom fighters from Turkey, Ecuador, and Vietnam. Those people really went through a lot, yes. Um, they are facing prison sentences and continuous physical and emotional threats just because they want to report the news and exercise their rightful freedom of, ex of expression and freedom of speech. So in order to honor them and many other journalists around the world, I try to look up some uh, smart quotes, not just to make them feel better, but to try to impress you and give a false impression that can, I can actually read. <laughs> so um, here it comes the feel good quote about uh, freedom fighters. James Connolly once said, the apostles of freedom are ever idolized when dead, but crucified when alive. You feeling better? <laughs> so don't worry guys, in a couple of hundred years, people will start loving you. Meanwhile, they just want to put a bullet in your head, throw you in a car trunk, and bury you somewhere in Jersey. <laughs> but in 200 years, you're going to be fine. So I have to say that uh, when I read the bios of my esteemed colleagues, I felt quite humbled by their struggle. I did have my share of love where I come from, and uh, all I did was crack some newsy jokes. But it seems that even if you stayed on the lighter side of things, that would still put you in trouble like people who report the news with a straight face. For some reason, a joke would piss off a lot of people, although the same people were laughing at the same joke before. But it only hurts when the joke is on you. So the same people who defended our freedom a few months ago, as I was taken for questioning on accounts of blasphemy, insulting the president, and threatening national security, those people are now quite indifferent when I am faced with charges like disturbing the peace, grand treason, and of course the gift that keeps on giving, threatening national security. <laughs> Many will pretend to have a sense of humor until this claim is actually tested. And when that happens, they will be angry. They will accuse you. They will try to label you. But the truth is, they are just too lame. Frank Poor Colby once said, men will confess to treason, murder, arson, false teeth, or even a wig. How many of them will own up to lack of humor? Freedom of expression is not a privilege. It is a universal right. It is a fundamental right. Now, you don't have to be a journalist or a reporter. You can just be an ordinary citizen with a camera and a YouTube channel. This is how we started, with a camera and a YouTube channel. I don't know how this will end, but at least this is how we started. <laughs> Speaking of how we started, I would like to thank my incredible team, who are the real reason behind me standing here tonight, especially those who have been with me from day one. Tari Azez, my friend, my colleague, co-creator of Bernamic, thank you. This is a dream that many people contributed to, and it all started by watching something called The Daily Show by Jon Stewart. John, you are a true inspiration for me and my team back home. And tonight, I want to thank you for, for your friendship, even more than your inspiration. But if I get killed or if I die in prison, my soul will come back and hunt you down. Um, this is one of those moments where I wish that my mom was here to watch. Uh, she, pass she passed away a few... Uh, weeks ago, and I am sure she is watching over me now. My awesome, incredible, and very cool dad is here, and, uh, and we both know what this means to her. Um, I would like to thank uh, Hala, my wife, for being so patient, so understanding, and so supportive. Uh, she is handling me and our 20-month-old little destructive ball of energy called Nadia, and it is hard to know which one of us drives her more crazy. 
Finally, I wish you all happiness, freedom, and lots of laughter. It is said that the freedom of any people can be judged by the volume of their laughter. So my wish for humanity, for you all, is to have the loudest laughter, laughs ever. Thank you very much for such a great honor. I hope you enjoyed your dinner. Please loosen your pants for food and save some room for your Thanksgiving turkey. Thank you very much. <laughs>